What's up, Zach Oates here, author, entrepreneur, and customer relationship guru. Welcome to Give an Ovation, growth strategies for restaurants and retailers, where we find industry leaders to share their secrets to grow your business. This podcast is brought to you by Ovation, the actionable guest feedback tool that works on or off premise and is easy, real time, and actually drives revenue. Learn more at ovationup.com. Welcome everyone to another edition of Give an Ovation. Today we have Lad Biro, who is the founder and principal of Champion Manage- Management and uh, one of the most interesting men in the world. Uh, uh, Lad, so yeah. glad that you're on with us today, man. Hey, it's great to be here with you. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, so, so first of all, Lad, why don't you tell us a little bit uh, about Champion Management, what you do. I know as you've got clients that are opening today uh, and, and things are really busy for you, so I appreciate you taking some time. Um, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about what does Champion Management do. Sure thing. Yeah, Champion, we, we are about 18 years old. We are a full-service uh, public relations, local store marketing, social media, franchise development, crisis management. Uh, agency. Uh, we're based in the Dallas area. We have clients uh, all around the country, big and big and medium size, maybe a couple smalls as well. Um, for the uh, vast majority of them are restaurants, uh, you know, some, some major players like Raising Cane's, Chicken Fingers, and On the Border, and Fazoli's, and Taco John's, um, and then, you know, plenty of others as well. So, we primarily focus on serving that sector of the economy. We do have other clients outside of that industry, uh, outside of the restaurant industry, but that's our, our primary focus. Awesome. That, well, there's some great people. I know that we, we both uh, work with uh, Doghouse as well. Great brand in, in LA. Fantastic people there. Great concept. Um, so so I, I got to ask, you're in DFW. Uh, what's, what's your favorite barbecue place in Dallas? Uh, I, of course, it's Dickie's. That's our- <laughs> there we <laughs> go. Barbecue. Sorry, what was that? I said Dickie's barbecue is awesome. Yeah, it is. It's phenomenal. Although I, I do miss those cow ribs from uh, Pecan Lodge. Those those sure. are pretty. Those are pretty good. So, all right. Yeah. So let, let's jump into it, lad. Um, restaurants are opening up. Uh, there's this new normal that's happening, and so my question is. As people, as restaurants are opening back up, how do they prepare now for the new normal, right? Either, either this, the, the grand reopening, as, uh, as the case may be, or in terms of they're already open, how do they prepare for what that new normal is? Yeah. So for the most part, most of our clients are still operating either through the drive through or curbless pickup. And uh, through delivery, of course. Now, there's some exceptions, but for the most part, they've been doing that over the last six weeks or so while they've had to, while that's been their only option. But you're right. I mean, obviously, uh, certain states are starting to open up. Um, the, uh, the restrictions on dining rooms being open. Georgia is opening today. Um, we have one of our client uh, brands that, that's there uh, opening their dining rooms today. So they've been working over the past few weeks to put new procedures in place, just like everybody else, you know, the masks and the gloves, the social distancing, but, you know, different ones are different brands are doing different things. I mean, we've talked about, you know, assigning specific uh, employees to be, you know, what one of our clients is calling it um, sanitary captains and and they're responsible for around the restaurant constantly uh, wiping surfaces down, disinfecting the whole thing and being very visible. I think that's a key thing as we go forward, because, you know, if you're going to go to a restaurant now and if you feel comfortable going in a dining room and you're socially distant and there's tables that aren't that close to you and all that, and you're sitting down for a while, I think, I know as a customer, I would expect to see somebody come around probably two to three times while I'm sitting there to to wipe things down. I think you're going to want to see that to be visible, not just trust them, but actually see them visibly uh, taking, uh, you know, precautions there they can. So, those are the types of, of things that, that uh, our, our clients are putting in place right now. And Lad, how do you strike that balance between being visible, being visible about the cleanliness and then kind of like being fearful of and making, you know, like losing your brand in something that looks like, it feels like a hospital. Like wh- how, how, do you, how do you recommend people at least approach striking that balance? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, 
obviously, I, I think the weirdest thing will be, you know, waiters and waitresses uh, with masks on. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be quite odd. And I just think that's going to be something that people are going to expect to see. I mean, we've gotten used to it going through a drive through or curbside. You see the person come to your window with a mask. I, I think it's, you know, boy, the world has changed so quickly. Um, so I, th I think that it's, you know, it's going to be up to each brand to do what's in their brand DNA. But I, I think, you know, from the, from the start, people are going to have to be overly cautious and they're going to have to be, you know, kind of go overboard on the safety just to make sure everybody understands it, that it is certainly safe to come back and eat there. I like that. And, you know, one thing that I've seen some of our customers doing is, you know, n not just having like hospital masks, but having masks that are more branded uh, to that location, things that are a little bit more fun. So it doesn't seem as, as scary, but yeah. I think that's, that's a great thing. Yeah. I'm um, sorry, Dan. Yeah. I, I think that's a great way to handle it too. Absolutely. I don't think you need the N95 masks. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just don't think that's, that, that's what anybody is planning on doing necessarily, but the, a branded mask or branded uh, bandana or something like that would be a, probably a, a very good way to go about it. Yeah. Cause I think you need to look at it from the perspective of I'm going to a restaurant for the first time in a few months. And, and who knows for some people that's going to be today that they go to a restaurant for the first time for some people that's going to be in four or five months when they go to a restaurant for the first time. And I think in, in my mind is that consumer it's, is there spit getting in my food? Whereas before it was like, Ah, I, I hope it's not. Now it's like, no, 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 no. Like, right. it, it better not, right? Sure, um, exactly. And that's why it would be good to, you know, for, for the people back in the kitchen as well to be wearing their, their face coverings too. I mean, the one good thing about this, I mean, there is no good thing about what's going on. But um, what we do know is it's not a foodborne illness. It's not, the virus isn't transmitted on food. So it, that has never really been a big issue. It's more of just obviously the surfaces and touching and all that kind of stuff that you have to worry about. So that's where I think the, the focus needs to be in the restaurants uh, on the, you know, cleaning down the surfaces. Every time, you know, a, um, a table gets up and leaves, just immediately get in there wiping it down, everything, chairs, table, the whole thing. Menus have to be wiped down or disposed of. All that type of thing is gonna be really important, especially in the beginning stages of this, of the, of this thing. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Now, now, lad, as you know, say someone has kind of a smaller shop, they, they don't have their own PR team. What do you recommend in terms of how do they get the press out um, that they are reopening? Well, hire a PR firm. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, um, but, you know, I mean, for smaller, for smaller brands, I mean, that's obviously a, a tougher thing. Um, I mean, they can try to reach out to their local media directly. I mean, you know, we, we have, our proprietary uh, lists of, of, uh, of contacts at all the, all the uh, media all around the country. And, and we guard that with our life, uh, our lives, because it's, it's, you know, something we've developed over the years. We fostered those relationships with the media. So it's not an easy thing to just start from scratch and start looking out for a small mom and pop brand in a certain city. If you just look up on the, on the, uh, TV stations, uh, website, you can, you can usually find a contact number then and you, there and you can try to reach out that way or you can reach out to your local newspaper as well. That's, that's a great plan. And in, in terms of social media, what kinds of things should people be, you know, uh, posting on social media as they're reopening? Yeah, social media is, is critical right now. Um, and that's a great place to keep your loyal guests up to date on what you've been doing. So in addition to reinforcing the message that you're open, you know, even if your dining rooms aren't open, that was the big thing in the very beginning. You would hear all these things about restaurants are, are being told to shut down. They were never told to shut all the way down, mm, right? Right. Shut down their dining rooms, but their curbside pickup and delivery or drive were always going to stay open. So that was the initial uh, push that we made sure our, our clients were very focused on. Make sure they know you're open. Scream it from the rooftops. You're open. Come on by, you know, do curbside. But what they need to be doing now, in addition to reinforcing that message, because it's not necessarily gotten to everybody yet, is they need to uh, let them know about the security precautions that, or the safety precautions that they're taking. You know, how are they going to be when they reopen? What are they going to be doing? How is it going to look different? Are they spacing out the tables? All you know, all mm. the, are they taking the temperature of employees when they come into work? Which is another important thing. So it's keeping them up to date, and then obviously using social media to talk about if you have new menu items or special campaign or Mother's Day is coming up, you have a special meal kit for mothers or 
special package to, to pick up, you know, those types of things are perfect for social media. Love that. And for, for um, as we're coming up on Mother's Day, so you're still recommending, hey, push it out there. Let people know that you're, you're going to be doing packages. Don't, don't just uh, keep it business as usual. Do something special for Mother's Day. Even, sure. yeah. yeah. I mean, if you don't, somebody else is going to, and you might as well be on top of it. I mean, most of our clients are, are you know, have special Mother's Day deals, whether it's a, a package deal for the whole family or something special that, that you know, dads and, and the kids can bring home and, and make it themselves, a meal kit. You know, some of our clients are doing that. So uh, there's all sorts of creative ways to do it. I mean, these are things that should be done anyway for a creative marketing team to, you know, reinforce the message that you're relevant, uh, you know, for holidays year round. So it's really no different. It's just a matter of how do you communicate it and what does that particular deal look like in, in this current situation that we have. Yeah. And now you, you mentioned a couple of times about curbside pickup. Um, and now in, in your article that you, uh, that you posted recently in QSR, and it's a phenomenal article um, for anyone listening or watching, uh, it is QSR Magazine. Uh, if you go to qsrmagazine.com and look up restaurants may never be the same, but could they be better? Uh, phenomenal article. And one of the things you talk about in there is how you believe that that curbside pickup is here to stay. Talk to us about that. So you don't, you don't think this is just like a fad of curbside pickup. You see this as being part of the new normal. Yeah, uh, it, it is part of the new normal. I think uh, we're all getting used to it. We're, we all, you know, the, the delivery companies and the third party delivery, that's a whole different story. You know, there's all sorts of the margin issues for restaurants there that, you know, it, it can be a very unprofitable exercise to, to use the third party delivery. But curbside pickup is, can be a very profitable um, part of your business model. And so why would you want to get rid of it? Condition your guests to come in and um, order online or order over the phone and then come in and pick it up. The, the, um, for you, that's a great opportunity. It's, it, so why wouldn't you want to keep that up and, and make that a key part of it? Especially if you're going to figure that, that uh, your capacity inside the restaurant is going to shrink maybe by half. So you're yeah. not going to make up what you what you were doing before this whole crisis began. You're not going to be able to have enough traffic flowing through the inside of your restaurant. So by all means, why wouldn't you want to keep that curbside delivery going strong? And have you seen some best practices of curbside, some things that have, have worked really well um, for some of the restaurants that you've seen? You know, I don't know that anybody that I can think of anybody that's doing something like really unique with curbside. Um, it's more the offerings that they're making, like we were talking about before, meal kits, um, grocery items, like Doghouse. Doghouse opened uh, a few weeks ago what they're calling their house market. So they're, if you wanna uh, grill your, your uh, premium uh, hot dogs, uh, craft hot dogs at home, like they sell there, or you want their burger patties that are really top notch, you know, nitrate free stuff, all that good stuff, you can go buy those grocery items there as well as your, your mustard and your ketchup and your, you know, hamburger rolls and what have you um so a lot of a lot of our clients are doing uh, creative things like that and why wouldn't you you know i mean it makes it easier people don't have to go to the grocery store as much a lot of people are, are, you know don't like doing that if they don't have to and uh, you know the grocery stores have sort of been encroaching on the restaurant space for a while now they, they've been yeah. doing, you know uh, ready to eat meals and all that business i mean they've, they've sort of taken you know taken their shot at, at restaurants and and try to get you to get more of their meal, more of your meals there. So why not uh, give them a little uh, taste of their own medicine, right? Start. Yeah, yeah, and and it's not just the grocery stores, right? But it's also, um, it's also you know these C stores that are becoming so much more popular nowadays, and you can actually get some some pretty good food in some of these C stores, and they're starting to encroach in on these restaurants and. Um, I know that that by us, there's a there's a huge area with grocery stores and restaurants, and one of the busiest places to go at lunch is the grocery store. I mean, they they've got they've set it up. So, and delis and the whole thing, yeah. Yeah, and so I think that's a great point is really leveraging that curbside because uh, you have as a restaurant owner and operator uh, a loyal fan base. You have people that love you that want you to succeed that want that certain dish. Um, and so leveraging that and adding things on top of that, uh, because overall, I don't know how, how you feel, Lad, um, but a lot of people believe that the overall revenue of restaurants per restaurant is, is going to take a while to get back to 100%. And 
And so it's a matter of how do you, how do you then manage the, uh, the expense side of things to maintain, you know, the similar, similar profits, right? Yeah, I mean, and it all starts now. You've got to plan for it now. And, and the, the restaurant leaders that are ahead of the game and are thinking through how they're going to reopen and what is their restaurant of the future going to look like, the ones that are doing that now are the ones that are going to win. They're going to come out stronger in the end. Because the truth is, it's, it's hard to say, but the truth, there's going to be a shakeout, right? I mean, there's thousands of restaurants that are going to be gone. Familiar name brands are going to be gone. So if you're positioned well, it can actually be not so much, I don't want to call it a good thing, but it, there's an opportunity there to actually grow your market share because a lot of the competition is going to be gone. So you you have to be ready to really grab that and be innovative in your marketing side. Yeah. And I love the fact that, you know, now is the time to prepare wherever you're at, right? If, if you're, if your state opened restaurants today versus if they don't open up dining rooms for three months from now, you still need to prepare today, right? To, for whatever that is. And, and when that comes up, I know one of your specialties as well is, you know, these, these grand openings and getting a lot of people, a lot of buzz there. Um, How should people be thinking about their grand post COVID-19 reopening? You know, that's going to be on a restaurant by restaurant basis or brand by brand basis and also a market by market basis. It really Mm -hmm. depends on what they've been doing all along. Have they, have they been open except their dining rooms? Then it's just a matter of of getting, getting that message out there that our dining rooms are open, come on in. And these are the things that we've changed. And maybe you have a special, you know, uh, uh, to to get people back in the, in the, uh, in the restaurant soon. Um, sooner than later. So I think that's, you know, going to be important. But if you've been closed completely, like a couple of our clients have been closed completely, uh, their buffets or what have you, um, then it's probably a bigger push. You need to make sure you break through and just say, hey, we we closed for the duration, but we're back now. We're coming back stronger than ever. We've got new systems in place, new procedures. We're perfectly safe. Come on in and let us uh, treat you to a great meal. I love that. And um, it's about having that plan. And having that thought through because you, what you don't want is to be caught on your heels, right? Because there's going to be a vacuum created. There's going to be um, an initial surge of a bunch of people going out wanting to, you know, we've all been pent up. It happened in China. Um, you know, they had what they called revenge spending, where after everything opened up, they went out there and they spent a bunch of money because they were just, you know, hungry to spend, hungry to buy something, right? That's right. Yeah, a lot of pent up demand out there. And, you know, the other thing to think about is another thing I talked about in the article is the whole the new face of entertainment. You know, we talk about e- entertainment concepts, and, and that's that's a thing. But there's also going to be, I think, uh, a new form of entertainment where we're talking about, you know, football games and baseball games, you know, where they're pl- hopefully they're going to be playing, but they're going to be playing in empty stadiums, at least initially. So what do you do for those people that are used to going to the stadiums? What are you used to doing? Uh, what are you going to do for the people that are used to going to movie theaters that still aren't going to be opening again or Broadway shows? Can you mm-hmm. put together special packages so that people can watch what they love to watch, what they would normally go to, but they can bring the food home? Like somebody like a doghouse could could do some great stuff with their, their dogs and their burgers and stuff and to bring home to watch um, football games and things like that. So, you know, the pizza, the uh, Pizza people are going to be ready for that. You know, the wing people are going to be ready for that. But why can't everybody else get ready for that as well and have a really cool NFL viewing package or something like that? Yeah, and 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 I, I love that part of the article, especially because when it comes down to it, it's like there's a lot of places where it's it's not like um, there's going to be a lot more demand, right? And so people are like, well, that's not my thing. Well, guess what? The the Buffalo Wild Wings are going to be inundated. So where else are they going to go? Where's the spillover going to be and make it you right. Make a big, make a big push on that. And that's again, another reason why hiring a PR firm uh, could be a huge help because if you're doing this big event and you're not used to it, uh, especially if this is something that's new, you know, go for it because the the thing that's going to be the, the worst thing you could possibly do is go back to the old normal, right? Cause that is that is a world that we will not see again, you know. If ever, it's going to be at least a couple of years before we see that again. Yeah, that's right. And and more likely than not, it's not going to be that we're not going to go back to the old normal. It's going to be, wait a minute, what about round two of COVID? You know, so that's an, it's another reason. You know, when you think about, you know, what do you do at curbside? 
well, why, why would you get rid of it? Because it's already, it should be a profitable uh, part of your, your business mix. But you know, they talk about a, a fall, you know, who knows? God willing, it won't. But most experts will tell you it's going to come back at some point. You know, it may not even go away for, you know, completely for a long time. But maybe, it, maybe it's the fall, maybe it's next spring. Either way, you've put the systems in place to deal with it now. Why would you get rid of those systems if there's a, a better than average chance that it's going to come back and hit you again? That's, that, that's a phenomenal point. And that, whenever that second wave hits, we all need to be ready, both individuals, companies, restaurants. We need to be ready so that when that, it, it's a bump, it's not a spike, right? And if, if we get rid of those things like curbside, then that just increases the amount of people that are together, increases the likelihood of that spike. And so I think that's great. Um, Lad, any, any last pieces of advice for restaurant owners, operators watching and listening? You know, I think the one thing I'd leave you with is, is uh, you know, back at, at uh, well, for all time, Americans have uh, made heroes out of our military men and women, right? Then 9-11 reminded us how important first responders are. Now we're learning how important frontline hospital workers are and healthcare workers are. And so many of our clients and, and restaurants out there all around the country, whether they're our clients or not, are doing wonderful things, donating, you know, free food to, um, to frontline hospital workers. We have a lot of our clients. Raising Canes is doing that. The Rustic is doing a great job. Um, don't forget those people. You know, they are, they are new national heroes now, and they can be a loyal group for you. So continue to support them. Maybe you have a... a um, a, you know, healthcare happy hour, uh, you know, once a month or something, or, or something special for nurses, special discounts, or nurses eat free on Wednesdays, or something like that. Do something to kind of keep that going, what you've already started, the goodwill that you've already developed, and, and the appreciation that you've been showing for the last four weeks. Keep it going, and there's no reason that that can't continue to be a, a good thing for you. Like, a lot of clients of, of ours like to take care of teachers, and that's great, and they ought to. I would just say keep the, those frontline healthcare workers in the top of mind as well. Love that. So here are my takeaways. Like one, be overly cautious. I love the idea of uh, a sanitary captain um, taking the employee's temperature, things like that. Two, be visible about what you're doing. Um, and there's ways to keep it fun without having to look like a hospital. Three, um, make sure you're getting, you have a plan in place for your grand reopening, whether that's a soft or a full reopening. Uh, and especially look at PR firms. I, I might recommend Lad as a good one. Um, and uh, four, curbside is here to stay, so keep that going. Five, entertainment. Capture those people who aren't going to those venues anymore. And lastly, uh, keep the love for healthcare going. They're keeping your heart healthy, so give them give them a little bit of that heart. Um, and you know, and the other thing is, when when you do that, it shows that it wasn't just a PR stunt. That's right. That it shows the sincerity of that. So, so keep that going. Um, Lad, how do people find you, reach out to you, or reach out to Champion Management? Well, if you want to know about what uh, Champion Management's all about, the best thing to do is just go to our website. It's championmgt, that's short for management.com. So championmgt.com. You can always uh, reach out to me as well. My email is lb at championmgt.com. Okay, that's L-B-I-R-O at championmgt.com. You got it. Okay, awesome. Lad, thank you so much for coming on. Today's ovation goes to you for helping these restaurants out, getting the press out, getting the love out, and sharing all this awesome information, some great knowledge bombs there. So thanks so much, Lad. All right, thank you, Zach. I really appreciate the opportunity. Glad you're with us today, and thank you. Thank you to the risk takers, the troublemakers, the crazies who are keeping this world clothed and fed. You're the ones who deserve an ovation. Again, this podcast was sponsored by Ovation. To see how we can help you grow your business, go to OvationUp.com. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, remember to give someone in your life an ovation today.